ISO, the bike is actually in development since around about two years. The ISO rounds up our uh, product portfolio. It's super light, fast and agile. Last year on the post on uh, Instagram, I showed a Katana Sword and this was the time where we still were uh, deeply in development for the new bike for the ISO. We used it as kind of symbol for the bike because in Katana Sword, is, man, its craftsmanship is super light, it's a deadly weapon, it's agile in the right hands, of course. We had the idea also to integrate the shape of the blade a bit in the frame. From a Katana, it's very usual to come to Japan and it started from there. During the time when we developed a campaign for um, the ISO, we had um, three different ideas in mind and we quickly figured out that uh, this direction with enemy and the style fits perfectly to the product, to the brand, and is also something really, really new in the bike industry. The process we developed over time, I sit together with Marcus, thinking about ideas, creating a concept, and then we go to our partners at Shift, and we talk with them about the idea. You need the right partners who are able to produce the stuff or have the right connections, take care about uh, the advertising afterwards. And then we went through several creative routes and iterations to get to, to where we've ended up. It's, it's really, really collaborative, actually. You know, we sit down creatively, me and Matt and Marcus and Andy, and we knock around quite a lot of ideas. And then there's a lot of backwards and forwards and, and kind of building up on ideas and building up on scripts. And there's a huge discussion, particularly internally, around how we were gonna deliver up to the end line and the message and reveal of the bike. Because ultimately for, for YT, this is a new category and it was going to put them in contact with a completely new audience of mountain biker, as well as those who are already kind of YT aware. I think the biggest challenge really is to stand out from the ride video. They push us and are willing to be pushed and they have a rich history of swimming upstream in the, in the mountain bike marketing world. First of all, I want that uh, YT fans feel entertained if, uh, when they watch um, this, this film because it's at YT we always try to make um, also our advertisement and campaign not so advertising. You know, we try to always tell a story and bring a little bit more, I would say, art into it, make it different. So it was really, really important that we found a way that would communicate immediately what the bike was and its attributes in a way that was consistent with the YT tone of voice. Once we got to the idea, I think the real challenge was getting the A-team on board um, and being super authentic with it. Um, you know, getting the line on board to do the animation, getting the right voiceover, um, and just getting all the details right. My role as executive producer was to try and find the perfect partners for us to work with, basically manage the budget and the schedule, keep it all on track whilst trying to deliver the best possible creative. And we also made sure that we worked with a brilliant production partner, which in this case was the line. I think the first thing that caught our attention about the YT brief was that it was very obviously an anime inspired brief. There's anime influence in a lot of what we do. We've got directors in house that specialize in that art style. Yeah, just the idea of this hero with a sword and he's kind of like a modern samurai and he's fighting his demons, I mean, what's not to like? So the script brief, which was about the complexities and hardships of life and how they can be overcome with the attributes of effectively the Izzo, the sword and the bike itself. As we thought about it, it was just a modern samurai hero has a standoff against three demons one by one. He defeats them with his attributes, fast, agile, sharp, so we wanted to make a metaphor for the bike with these fighting scenes. With a complex animation like this, there's various stages you have to go through. And one of the first things you have to do is find the voiceover and uh, set the tempo of the music. So we found a wonderful Japanese actor who did our voice for us. So the entire voiceover in the film is in Japanese and it was intended to make the piece as authentically Japanese as possible. Then you start on with your storyboards and you move into an animatic phase. It's an animatic is kind of like a rough version of the film in storyboard form, just to make sure we get all the beats right and things are flowing well. Once that's done, we go into production where we start doing rough animation. And then gradually each week, um, you work on a selection of shots and the shots just get better and better as the week goes on as you move through all the various stages of animation. Probably about 20 people have touched Izzo along the way uh, and that's YT, Shift, uh, animation company, uh, music people. The importance of sound design, it almost gives the world that you create an animation life. 
as soon as you add the sound to it, it just kind of gives a realism that you wouldn't have um, without it. You know, you want to try and come away from this piece and even though the visuals have stopped, the music is still uh, ticking over in your head. And the most challenging aspect was the compressed amount of time that we had. This project probably should have taken almost twice as long as it did, so that was quite a challenge. And animation is not a very easy thing for someone to get their head around, especially when you're seeing scribbles on the paper and you're seeing storyboards. It's like, is that going to look like this? But there was a certain level of trust and confidence in us to deliver. And I think it really benefited the project and trickled down to the rest of the team. And every stage of production, like everybody was really kind of invested in putting it all into it. And I think that's, that's just a testament to working with uh, Shift and YT. I guess my favourite moment in the process is when you get to the point where the animation is at a level and the music is at a level and the sound effects and everything is starting to come together in a way that you can properly get excited about it for the first time and you know it's going to work and you know it's going to be a bit special. Now I quite like the decapitation scene, but that's just me. <laughs> I have many, many favorite parts. I like the Tengu, the creature, the character, is, he's, he's great, but there are so many great pieces. You should watch it frame by frame, every, every millisecond. You should watch the film because every scene is, is, a, is a piece of art, so I can, cannot really say. Working with YT and Shift has been a real collaborative experience. On this project, it really was a back and forth, it was a discussion, and I think that always the best creative and the best end film comes about where everybody's meeting on the same level and discussing to push the project forward. Three things in my mind. Uh, get noticed, first of all. Uh, entertain people. Uh, and never forget that you're selling stuff. You've got to sell stuff. So now we soon, and um, what next? I can't tell you. Otherwise, I'm have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all.